What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 50 and we start today's episode off with some player training and also seeing a training injury for Johan Martial. He's going to be out for a few days so not good to see. He'll miss the first game of today's episode away against Marseille but come back for the other two in today's episode so not too big of a deal but still never nice to see a training injury for a first 11 player. And also look at a scout report here and for the first time in quite some time Paris FC have began filling up their academy of young talent. Yeah of course I didn't scout for a while this season I forgot all about it to be honest and now my scout's been out for a couple of months he's picked up some decent players there I put a few in the academy it is quite likely that this will be our final season of club and country for reasons I've discussed before but just in case we do play into season four and beyond it's good to snap up the young talent and we got them in the Paris FC Academy also look at the squad report right here and you'll see the standings as well for the leagues and the cup uh, now you may be wondering why today's episode is not a special it's episode number 50 usually for 50 or 100 I make a special video you may be wondering why that it is. Uh, well, I'm not going to sit here and make tons of excuses. The truth of the matter is, you know, this series has lost a lot of viewers and because of that, my new series due to start on the weekend, I didn't really feel like it would be a good use of my time whilst I'm prepping for that series to start on Saturday. So it's it's as simple as that, really. I do apologise if you were hoping for a special video today, but I didn't really see much point in it, to be honest, as I've got bigger things. So I've got bigger fish to fry, basically. Bigger fish to fry? Bigger fish to fry, basically. So because of that, I thought it's probably not a good idea to make a special. And as things stand right now the season is due to end on Friday if I made a special long video it would end earlier and I'd have nothing to upload between now and Saturday so because of that I thought it's best just to do things as I'm, I'm doing them right now just you know feathering the episodes making sure I don't put too much in and making sure that this series will end just before a new series is due to start so timing is all good basically but uh, still I do apologize you were hoping for a special video but that's basically the reason why I haven't done one but uh, still following that little league table as you can see just a few games to go we are one point behind PSG. They have the better head-to-head -head record, but Monaco did us a massive favour. So after our last game, which was a win against SM Kane by two goals to nil, PSG faced Monaco at the Parc de Prance, and they got beat by Monaco. So Monaco have done us an absolutely massive favour there and have made sure that the gap remains at just one point with a few games to go. So I'll be honest, PSG are still the strong favourites. We've got some tough fixtures to come. We face Monaco on the final day at home. So we've got some tough fixtures to come, but we're still still within reach of our rivals with six games to go but for the first game of today's episode though we take on Marseille away from home in the south of France at the Stade Velodrome and Marseille right now are not out of this title race they're in third place right now only a few points behind us and PSG they are not out of the title race and if they win this game they'll close the gap to just three points at the top of the table so it's going to be a massive game here third versus second could we pull away from Marseille basically take them out of the title race or would they get themselves back into it. Well, the first chance fell to us. Little Yannick Giron shot was off target, though, and it was still nil-nil. Mandanda then made a really good save in the 10th minute to deny Boga and turned the shot behind for a corner. Boga took the corner, swung it into the centre. Lamar goes for the header, and just 11 minutes in, what a fantastic start in one of the biggest games of the season late on with six games to go, because Thomas Lamar heads in the Boga corner and does open the scoring here at the Velodrome. So good corner by Boga, good cross into the centre. Lamar wins the header, puts it past Mandanda, and does open the scoring for us early on. So we made a fast start to this game. You know, Yannick Giron was shot early on, then Bogus strike on target, well saved Mandanda. We were looking menacing early on, looking really up for the game, and we had the lead as well through Lamar with his sixth goal of the season. From kickoff as well, Marseille get the ball away, Bogus hassling, wins it back, gives it to Thierry Ambrose. Ambrose keeps hold of that ball, keeps hold of it, then finds Corchia right back inside towards Yannick Giron, holds the ball up, back inside towards Corchia, goes for goal, slips whilst taking a shot, hits the bar, but St. Maximin turns in the rebound bound and within the space of just a couple of in-game minutes we've gone from being level at nil-nil to two goals up inside the opening quarter of an hour so what a start to this game and you could see I was really up from this game right from kickoff I was hassling Marseille I was putting the pressure on right from the beginning all the players were showing great hustle particularly Boga and we got ourselves the second goal there through St. Maximin getting his fourth goal of the season so Marseille nil Paris FC 2 he's really turned it on this year as well St. Maximin last year only one one goal all year long. That was his fourth and his uh, our second in today's game. So 2-0 to Paris FC. It could have been 3-0 here in the 35th minute. Mandanda made another good save though to the Boga and it was still 2-0. But at the half, as you can see, we had played far better in my opinion. We'd looked far better as well. Possession was equal. We'd looked the stronger side. But three minutes after the restart, well, how about this? Marseille crossed the wings to the centre and JJ starting in the absence of the injured Martial. 
Well, that's not a good way to show that you deserve more minutes, is it, JJ? Probably one of my worst own goals ever. And unfortunately, it gives Marseille a goal and puts them back in the game just a few minutes after the restart. The cross comes in. There is no danger. There is no one in the area for Marseille that's going to get on the end of that. And JJ sticks out a leg. Barmy was already going to claim it. And as you can see, he puts the ball into his own goal and Barmy can't claw it out. So it's Marseille 1, Paris FC 2 and JJ with a comical own goal. I mean, the, the funny thing was, you know, Martial was injured pre-game. But he, uh, he had, like, really low fitness. So I could have started in this one if I wanted to. But it just meant his stamina was so low. There was a chance he might pull up during the game or something. But I thought, you know what? Even though it's a big game, I'll give JJ the responsibility. What a poor decision that proved to be. But in the end, it didn't matter too much. Because we did win the game by two goals to one. We had the second and final chance at half really through Lamar. Mandana made another good save though, to keep it at 2-1. But we were the far better side doing this game. We looked far stronger over the course of 90 minutes. Despite Marseille having a tinty tiny bit more possession. And we deserved to get the winners well so final score Marseille 1 Paris FC 2 I'd say Marseille aren't officially out of the title race now definitely not but it's going to be hard for them to get back into it so a really big win for us that one uh, Barmy then accepted his contract extension as well after the game great to see but again just really really funny how I thought you know I'm going to put my faith in JJ I could start uh, you know sort of a half fit Martial if you will he is the better option but no JJ going to keep him in there and uh, yeah it didn't really work out for us on the defensive end with that comma clone goal but either way we won the game, that's the most important thing. And that's now three league wins in a row as well. And after such an inconsistent run of form, after such a patchy run of form as well, which was very, very disappointing, you know, losing games in succession and failing to win for quite some time. I think we went like six games without a win at one point. We weren't playing very well. Now to have three wins in a row and also score as well eight goals in the last three games. It's really, really important for us that we begin to find these positives right now, come the end of the season as we're chasing Paris Saint-Germain. But uh, still, we take on nonsense here for the second game of today's episode. Boy, by that big win against Marseille in the last game. We started that game really well with two goals in the opening 15 minutes. No goals for quite some time in the first half of this game. We would open the scoring just six minutes before the break and it was Thierry Ambrose who got the goal as well. He's looking rejuvenated after I dropped him against Barcelona. Put him back in the team. Now he's finding the back of the net on a more regular basis and that is goal number 18 for the season for our skipper. So our number nine scoring once again. I'll be the first person to admit and I've admitted quite a few times this season that Ambrose is not playing as good as he did in his first two years here at Paris FC but either way 18 goals is not something you're going to snuff your nose up at but either way Paris FC won nonce nil it should have been 2-0 12 minutes before the end it fell to the right person there Thierry Ambrose a lovely through ball to him he went through one on one but it was one of those moments where I just knew the goalkeeper was going to make the save before I'd even taken the shot it was almost like he was set in his ways he was going to the left hand side and I couldn't put the ball past him so still Paris FC won nonce nil but how about this from the corner after that St. Maximin goes up for a header gets himself an injury and has to be forced off the pitch as well with the substitution so St. Maximin going down there awkward awkward landing he gets an injury the game does finish 1-0 but for the rest of the game I was thinking to myself how long is that injury going to be for for St. Maximin how long is going to be out for as we come towards the end of the season he's been a big player for us this year again as I said earlier scored against Marseille in uh, the earlier game in today's episode the game before this one he's He's looked really good this year. A few more goals than last year. A couple of assists as well. Been pretty decent on the left wing. How long is he going to be out for? Well, unfortunately, it is a five-month injury for our left winger. St. Maximin has broken his tailbone. He'll be out for five months. So, of course, he'll miss the rest of this season. And he'll also miss the start of season four if we come back for a season four. And that is absolutely massive. So, we'll come back at some time in October or possibly November. And that's just really really gutting man because he's he's been one of those players who hasn't really got as much praise as he deserves but he's someone who I've looked to on quite a few occasions to get the goals and he's delivered them you know four goals this year it may not sound like a lot but you've got to remember last season in his debut year only scored once all year long this year he's got a couple of assists to his name as well he's been a pretty decent player for us on the left flank and because most of our attacks come down the right hand side he's not always involved in the play either but whenever he is he does quite well and that's a big big blow for us too because it means that our 
formation may have to change because we don't really have a left winger. So Maximin is a striker by trade, but I play him out there because he can play out there. Now we don't really have like a left winger to play in that position. I don't want to switch Lamar to the left hand side because he's left footed and I like him cutting onto his stronger foot to shoot. So it's a big decision now between now and the end of the season. What do I decide to do with our usual formation? Do I switch to 4 3 3 and try something different? Maybe, uh, maybe play Dembele and Ambrose up top together and play a 4 4 2 diamond central, play Lamar centrally. Not entirely sure what we're going to do now uh, between now and the end of the season. It's a big, big blow for us and say Maximine will miss the rest of the season and the start of season four if we come back for it. But either way, for the third and final game of today's episode here, we will take on Stad Reim in the Coupe Nationale semi finals. Now, the Coupe de Ligue final is on the weekend, so because of that, I decided to rest all my players for this game and make 11 changes from the side that just beat, um, well, I almost forgot a team name there, Nantes, in the last game. So you're on a four game win streak right now, but I decided to make a, uh, a full change to the team, rest all 11 players. We were trailing at the break, but in the second half, 12 minutes after the restart, well, how about this for a goal? Bujedra scores one of my best goals in FIFA 16, and probably one of my best goals ever. What a goal by Bujedra. And if you didn't see that first time, you gotta check out the replays. This was unbelievable. The cross gets floated into the center. Our attacking midfielder chests the ball up and bicycle kicks it into the top corner and makes it Paris FC 1, Stad Reim 1. What an incredible goal by Bujedra. But unfortunately, as I was jumping up and down after I saw this goal go in and going absolutely mental in my living room and looking like a complete idiot to the people opposite my flat, well, as you can see, it turns out it wasn't the best goal I scored in quite some time because it takes a pretty big deflection off the defender. So in the end, it's, it's a lovely goal and I'm going to take nothing away from Bujedra. It's a wonderful show of agility and balance and a, a fantastic strike on him as well, facing the other direction. But as it does take a deflection, I can't call it my best goal in quite some time. And that's why the title isn't something like, OMG, best goal I've ever scored, because I can't claim it as that. You know, I really can't. It took a deflection and therefore I can't claim it as a wonder goal. It, it's a lovely goal. It's a lovely, lovely goal. But the deflection means that I can't really rave about it for the rest of my life. But either way, Paris FC won Stad Reign 1. That was the most important thing he found in the back of the net, albeit through a deflection. But sadly for us, with 17 minutes to go, well, it's going to be a familiar story for Paris FC because in the first season against Stad Rene and in the second season against Toulouse, the third season against Stad Reim does see us get knocked out in the Coupe Nationale semi finals. The lad with the ginger beard fires one in from just outside the area. A really nice strike, and unfortunately for us, our four game win streak is halted here. Our last loss was against Barcelona in the Champions League round of 16 that knocked us out, and this game also knocked us out of competition. We're now out of the Coupe Nationale. So for the third straight season, it is heartbreaking the semi-finals for Paris FC. We lose to Stad Reim. We get beat by two goals to one. But hey, unlike the first two seasons, I'm not going to complain too much because we know that our next game is far bigger. It's our first ever Coupe, uh, Cup final. We're taking on Stad Rene in the Coupe de Ligue final and we'll be looking for revenge in that game. So it's a shame. It's disappointing, but at least I'm not too fast knowing we've got the Coupe de Ligue final to come. And as things stand Lee table as well, with two points clear of PSG with four games to go, we could still be on for a double. But that is going to end today's episode of Coming Country Do, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. The next episode will be the Coupe de Ligue final against Stad Rene. So look forward to that very soon. Hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode as well. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon.